We've oh, been here. shit. Welcome. So for anyone that watched last week, Thanks for putting up with the uh, growing pains that we had. That was, uh, there was a few things that were a little tough. We tried to make it the best we could with what we had, but, you know, shit happened. This, this, <laughs> is, a, this is a good part about being one of the creators of the podcast is I didn't have to watch. <laughs> oh. I got to live it. Oh, I no. didn't have to watch the growing pains. I'm like, no, we did pretty damn good, I feel. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> right? Um, I think we, uh, we got... I really like what we got going on now as far as keeping everything together. I think everything yep. sounds good. So hopefully this time around, it's a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. And we appreciate you guys sticking around, supporting the supporting the squad, you know? Yeah. Um, start off this week. You know, Kyle, you had some uh, family news my that you wanted to share. Boy, Maddie McConnell, my little cousin, our, our little dog. big cousin. Yeah, he's fucking huge. He uh, got, his, got a workout with the Lions a couple days ago, and they invited him to the training camp, got a spot open for him. So uh, did you hear the news? Go, he, he hasn't. They don't know for sure if he's in. But did, oh, did you? The newspaper saying he got signed. Oh, oh shit! Yo, this guy's saying they got signed. Check his Instagram. This boy didn't send. He, he, my boy didn't send that. <laughs> hey, dog, check it. Oh, it's all dog. Over. There we go, it's big all, papa. It's all over the news, man. I, I haven't done shit. I, I've been working all day. <laughs> this guy got signed, bro. My I'm, boy. I'm so pumped for this guy. That's yeah, that's awesome. Sick. And like, okay, so I made a little Facebook post for him, but like the perseverance that he's shown, because basically this is our guy. Like, I remember like. When we were in grade nine together, grade eight, playing football in the yeah. schoolyard, and I'm like getting people to come out and play touch. You know, well, it was never touch, but like yeah. play like touch football, <laughs> according to the supervisors. <laughs> it was yeah, never yeah. touch, but getting people to come out and just like play schoolyard ball with us because mm-hmm. like I play football, a few of my friends play football, but like Kyle didn't play football. And at the time, neither did Matt. And Matt was not a very aggressive kid at the time. He had a bit of an anger thing, but he was pretty small. And then he, he 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 had a very big anger thing, but he was good at hiding it in public. I yeah, mean, as a as a small Matt, as a child, I, I could confirm to that. Yeah, like, but like you know, after like the first year of like showing him how to play ball in the schoolyard, because yeah. that's where it started, just playing in the schoolyard. Yeah, he turned into a dog, and now like nice, like nice. I you know I've been following him through like as he's been going through the ranks because like I've always kind of been like maybe like three or four years ahead of him in the okay. in the in the cycle. Um, but like his highlight tape, his CFL prospect tape, dude can hit. Oh and really? For, yeah. for See, defensive, man. Defensive backs Big are usually smaller, fuck. smaller guys. Yeah. But he's not as small, and he does not hit lightly. Man, he's, that's sick. He's an intimidating presence back there, and so like him getting and he didn't get drafted. They did the CFL draft, and he, we thought he was gonna go, and he mm-hmm. didn't go. We. This is what I I, I talked to him uh, two days ago. The fucker didn't tell me he got signed, but uh, <laughs> when we when we talked, I was kind. I basically said like. Uh, Cause we had a a big zoom zoom in a bunch of his boys from school, yeah, uh, yeah, his yeah. mom, all of us watching the CFL draft. His his agent told him he's come going probably first round, maybe second round, and we get to the end of the draft, no Matt McConnell, no nothing, huh. and it's just like a gut punch. And I said most people they take that okay, I'm done, I'm done school. I just didn't get drafted. I my it's gone. I gotta kind of yeah, get it. Yeah, I yeah, gotta get a job now. I gotta do whatever. Yeah, just so he kept going. It. Fucking that beast. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> man. Boy. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, he he is he put it put on the cleats. He kept running. He he got he stayed with his trainer the whole time. Nice. It's throughout everything, he's just kept pushing himself to be a bigger, better athlete. And yeah, yeah. We're super proud of you, bud. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, that's and sick, it's man. so crazy. And I th- I think that's the part that I had so much respect for because. When you're, you know, I can relate as a, as a football player that, you know, I wasn't going to go anywhere with it, but I can relate to that feeling of like thinking, you know, this might be it. It might be done. Fair, you put in all yeah. this work, you worked so hard, you had fun while it lasted, but like, who knows inside your head, you're yeah. working, you're still doing your thing, but maybe, maybe it's not going to work out anymore. And there's no way to be in his position to not have those thoughts but for him to not let those thoughts get to yeah, him. Yeah, to keep pushing, and to right? keep grinding. Because I've seen him. He's quiet on Instagram, but he's working all the time. Mm-hmm. You see his post, but he's not saying anything. He's just working. Nice. Every mm-hmm. post is just him working. And he's been working this whole quarantine, yep. this whole year. He's been working. Nice. And to see him come follow this path and such a long path. And, you know, yeah, he just got signed. And this is just the start of the job. The job's not done yet. But, yeah. like, and And this so is much the thing respect. with him, too, because he, uh, he signed a couple years ago to play in... Either France or Germany, uh, European uh, professional league signed, gets there, 
First weekend, he injures his shoulder. They veto the contract. He's sent home the next day. Oh, no way. So this isn't the first time he's kind of, like, he's continuously had kind of his dreams taken away. Yeah, yeah. And he just kept going, and he, he's... Keep pushing, man. He's not going to be somebody that gets signed and then kind of sits down. He's yeah. he's looking to make an impact immediately, so... That's He's, he's hungry. And yeah, that's, yeah. I have so much respect for the kid, so I'm, we're, we're copping that jersey immediately. <laughs> immediately. Uh, yeah, honestly, man, if you're, if you're listening, fire it up. Proud of you, bro. Keep it up. Yeah, mad respect. That's you know, sick. It's one of those things, like, you know... I was usually, especially in our age group, I was, like, the football guy. Yeah. But to, like, see guys that, like, coming up under me that, like, you know, I knew him and all this stuff. And the thing is, like, man, you're so much better than I am. Like, <laughs> I have so much respect because I know how hard it is to get to that point and to see him take things that maybe I had, like, the littlest bit of impact because we were talking about, like, schoolyard ball. Mm-hmm. And he learned so much more, obviously, away from me. But I'm just thinking, like, to see where it started, just the influence of playing with football with the older kids at school. And to take that and be better than I could even be, so much respect. If we're gonna take yeah, that influence, awesome, man. I beat that ass for years. <laughs> <laughs> I beat the shit out of that kid so many times, and then, then he turned to six one six two, started getting in the two hundos, and I started up. using my p's and q's. <laughs> I shut my ass up and I said, "Proud of you, bro." <laughs> I beat that oh. ass up. This guy kills me. Oh no. Yeah, fuck me. So that was uh that was Kyle's <laughs> big news that we wanted to yeah. talk about. That's uh that's awesome. Um breaking news. I uh I had a interesting week myself. Yeah, let's, let's let's hear about your week. I um so my uh my mom recently over the last like year or so reconnected with some like family friends that like she basically grew up with on like yeah. the same farm with these guys. Like they're like very close friends. And she had been visiting with them for the last like year, like going in to see them um, at their place and getting to know her, their whole family and their culture and everything. Now they know me, but I haven't, I don't know these people. Mm. Haven't talked to them. The old haven't. family friends kind of thing from like childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Like way before I was even around. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know them at all. Well, the other day my mom was playing a show for them because it was like supposed to be a wedding, but it ended up not being a wedding. And But my mom's a singer, so she's still... When play to show and it was on a native reserve and so i go there and i kind of get to meet everyone introduce myself and i realize they're chief i know him i went to school with him my whole life okay <laughs> his name is randy and he went to bernard with me he was my elementary school he went to ad rundle with me <laughs> he's like a year or two younger mm. i think but he was there the whole time weird and the funniest part was, is he reminded me of something that I forgot I did. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's another Dustin's an asshole. <laughs> so, grade six, I got a slingshot for my birthday. And I thought, yeah, I bet I should take this to school and that'd be dope. Everyone would be so hyped on me. <laughs> and so I bring this slingshot to school and I start shooting people with it. And, uh... <laughs> Guess who I hit in the face and cut his face open? Good old this, Randy. This kid named Randy. Yeah. And I completely forgot. And so I meet this guy. He's like, yeah, good to meet you. I'm like, yeah, we go to school together. He's like, yeah, yeah. And then like five minutes later, he comes out. He was like, did you have a slingshot? And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> it of was, course, he remembers. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I was dying. It was like the, the second thing that came up in the conversation. I was like, of he's course. never forgotten. Yeah. I was like, I was like, don't worry, bro. I'm like, I'm like, look at his face. I'm like, you can't even tell. You look great, bro. Yeah. Like, you look good. <laughs> you look fine, man. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, shit. I was like, mm. classic. So, you know what? But we're good. We're on good terms. I uh, didn't make an enemy for life, which is, you know, always a concern. Yeah, <laughs> always enough. good. That's hilarious. But uh, yeah, it was it was really cool getting to getting a chance to meet these people. And uh, he said he uh, he runs like a youth group for the kids in the neighborhood. And I was like, yo, like that's what I do. I help kids. That's my thing. So I was like, yo, we exchange numbers. Link. Uh, we're gonna link up and uh, nice. Do those things, you know. I think he's uh mostly it's gonna be pretty standard thing, just like link up, play sports. I guess he said they've done golf before, they have soccer, jujitsu, like they've tried all different kinds of things. So it sounds like a lot of fun, and uh, I'm always down to help kids out. I think uh, giving kids an opportunity to explore, you know, their passions and stuff like that. I think it's really important, and I'm very passionate about it. So yeah, that's awesome. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Pretty fired up for it. It was a cool, cool weekend in regards to that. Um, Matt, <laughs> so, did you have any? 
weekly updates or you oh man busy day with the sun huh? you guys uh, went to yeah a- i uh <laughs> yeah i had a i had a good father's day i uh we scored big at a uh, castle fun park Hey. Hit, a, hit a big jackpot. Hey. Got uh, distracted him with a blow-up sword. I uh, <laughs> took all the rest in candy. <laughs> you know, he sees a little bit of it, get a couple of small pieces. Yeah, man, like, look, we got big. And then it's like got this huge paw behind me. Like, that's yeah. for me later. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Um, other than that, though, man, I'm uh, I'm struggling. Uh, this this heat is killing me. I, yeah. uh, I'm a winter guy, so... I think this it's is, killing uh, you. This, is... this heat's killing him. Like Yo. <laughs> he lost ten pounds already. <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny because this isn't even like a hot place to live, and like, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, dude, I live on this the third... next week. It is. Yeah, this like record breaking temperatures. Yeah, everywhere. we're hitting forty. I, uh, I live on the third floor, and my house is just just scorching all the time. Like it's it's a uh, it's a struggle. I'm not a fan. I just yeah. want winter to come back. I want to go snowboarding. Your, your boy sits in the frost. Oh. I got the AC pumping right now. The second I get in, I put on my slippers, keep my toes nice and cool. <laughs> that was oh. nice. It's, it's easy. But uh, speaking of Father's Day, I went out to watch some uh, softball. Nice. And uh, it's hard to tell right now, but I burnt the shit out of myself. And I, <laughs> I shaved my head right before I went. And yeah. I didn't think about the fact that there was no hair there's covering no, it anymore. No tan there. Yeah. So I had like I don't know if it's still there. I can almost see it now that you're saying yeah. it. There's a slight, slight red line. I got a your red line all the way down <laughs> nice. to the back of my head to the point of like I can't, oh, no. I can't touch my hair because it's mm. too hot. And uh, had a shower the other night. Oh, and just as cold as possible. It felt like it was like lukewarm. Jeez, it was, eh? it that's, was, yeah, that's uh, I do, I do not tan. I go pink. <laughs> Look like a lobster yeah. for a couple of days, and then I'll just slowly go back to white. Yeah, yeah. Scottish Irish. When I was a kid, I thought I was immortal because, like, we'd go to Mexico, and I wouldn't put on sunscreen. I'd just go in the pool and say, "Bye, mom," and I'd be <laughs> gone all day. And I'd just be in the pool, and I'd come back, and I just looked like a local. And the only Jeez, way you could eh? tell that I was supposed to be with my family, is pull my shorts down a little, and it's from a white ass. <laughs> that was it. And wait, so the like, Mexicans are pulling your pants down? <laughs> oh, <Irks? laughs> wait, 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 wait. What's happening here? <laughs> we need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd this go? Yeah. All inclusive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh no. But yeah, Whoa. so like I I thought I was immortal. I never needed sunscreen and I could just like get through every vacation yeah. and every summer I was blessed. And then I hit an age probably closer to like my early twenties where I was like, wait, you have sunburn? What is what that what feels is this? like? Now I'm like, fuck. I can't pay attention to yeah. this. And it's like a thing that I've Dude. never cared about my entire life. All of a sudden, I got to put sunscreen I on. I have a horrendous sunburn story. Oh so when I was younger, I was like, yeah. man, I was like maybe six, seven. Like I was pretty young, but I was like out out and about having fun. Uh, my dad didn't put any sunscreen on me. Like just not even thinking about it, right? Out all day. Got this like nasty sunburn on my back, across my whole back. And uh, I think it was like the next day or the day after, like it was like, painful like it was like a bad burn but like we were either going to like a family function or something like that and uh, all the kids were outside having fun and i really wanted to go out so again being a kid not thinking about it go outside have my fun come back and it was like so like fast forward a couple of days i am bedridden i can't get up because my entire back is starting to blister over (laughs) it gets so bad to the point that my parents had to then move me down to the couch so that they could monitor me and uh, they what? actually, we had a doctor come to the house to check on me because my entire back had like a pillow, one giant mm. blister on it. Like it was insane. I was probably like what? couch ridden for about a week. It was, it was insane. I've never even heard of Yeah, that. no, it was, it, it was like. I've got some white cool. sisters. Like. No, yeah, it was the craziest <laughs> thing ever. Like I, it was, uh, it was like, a, it was a dangerous thing. Like the doctors came to our house to check on me. Like it was, it That's was insane. Wild. Yeah. That one is... giant, giant blister across my entire back. And I think it got to the point where it was like, it was a fine line because you can't pop it because it was protecting me, <laughs> like yeah. essentially keeping my heat regulated so I didn't die. And oh it had been going on for so long and I was in so much pain that it was finally like, okay, we have to pop this because it's putting so much pressure on his back. Yeah. But then you have to keep like 
cold, wet towels on his back to replicate yeah. the <laughs> fucking blister. The man's on a waterbed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was bowl. insane. I haven't thought about that in a while. Oh my god. It was insane. I can't even imagine. Yeah. I get sad about a tiny blister. Oh man. Yeah. No. So cross your whole back. This is not at all meant to be a one-up thing i don't remember any of it because i was really young <laughs> white guys and their sunburns hey, yeah white white guys sunburn this is basically like my holy grail so <laughs> i'm probably three maybe four years old like really really okay, young yeah, yeah. and i have uh i guess i was i don't have any recollection just from what my parents told me but uh babysitter is watching me brings me out back puts puts me in the little kiddie pool lathers me up with, ugh, lathers me up with sunscreen it's all ready. The I'm usual. out there for whatever the whole day. By the end of it, she's got the boyfriend inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she she was probably busy doing hey. something else. <laughs> Just go play the, outside. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> sit in the pool. You'll be fine. Right? No, this is like the 90s. Yeah, no, the 90s. nobody kidnapped anybody. No one gave a shit. It was the 90s. No one gave a shit. If they did, they didn't even have internet to find them. <laughs> so oh, you're gone. Fuck. So uh, so she comes out to get me, and I'm just. Red head to toe. Oh no! To the point my <laughs> swimsuit was like burnt into me. Ew, what? What? What, what, do you what mean? ended up happening was she did not put sunscreen on me. She put baby oil on me. Yo, oh, she accentuated a and just burnt. Yeah, every part of me. They had to cut my bathing suit off. Literally oh, like my crispy God. chicken. Yeah, you literally got Holy deep fried. Shit. So yeah, literally deep fried. Oh my God. So my theory on this, because I did I she have, get fired? Like, did she get no. sued? <laughs> 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 this like yet again the nineties. Yeah, I'm gonna, like who are they gonna sue? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, mom, I have no idea how much money you <laughs> have. Boys will be boys, am I right? Your mom's like, oh Heather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kyle's in the hospital. Oh, no, they just put me in the cold water for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh be a bitch. But my, so my brother and my dad, they both tan like crazy. Yeah. And I feel like this babysitter stole that from me. I think she burnt the <laughs> yeah. tan off of me. That's actually and I'm just insane, so far down that it's only white and red. Wow, hey? That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a, it's another right when you started talking I'm like I haven't thought of this in forever. Yeah, like, I one legit of those don't even remember it. childhood memories. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not supposed to remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think I black out so many bad memories. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just pretty sure I have amnesia, like straight up. Like yeah. I things happen all the time and I'm just like, did that happen though? I don't know. Is that <laughs> I, a good practice? I, that's Probably what it not. is. Parents were smarter than us. Like we I have, I have my Facebook memories. Yeah, we had the bad assumption that they were. I no, think no, that's no, what childhood no, was about. No, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Not in, like, intelligence. We're clearly smarter. But, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> in the fact that there's no documentation. The only documents that we have Fair, of anything man. we did growing up was in photo albums that they curated themselves. Yeah. They had all your best moments and everything else. It's gone. Yeah. If they didn't say it to somebody, it never happened. Hide we put everything on Facebook. Memories. I put everything on Instagram. Every like couple days, I get a memory of, oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. Yeah. That's where they're smarter than us. We're not talking the... Yeah, social media is weird, man. I don't understand the need to post absolutely everything. Like Now that we're a bit older, it's like a lot of social media is like... like I see kids everywhere, like, like parents yeah. posting about their children. It's like, man, how weird is that to have... You're growing up and from birth, your entire life has been documented. Like that's, that's like bizarre. alienating, I feel, where are these kids going to grow up and think of that as like some sort of toxic thing that we kind of like it was just so normal for us? Or are they going to be an even worse, more involved version like into social media? I yeah. I've just I find it so weird. Mm. The, the need and desire to just post absolutely everything and especially revolving around children. It's It's just weird. I think it definitely ties into like you know people's public image like everyone's always worried about how do we look publicly is yeah. are these things inappropriate can you sell things like yeah you know and that even ties into you know one of our first stories today disney's doesn't want to have their superheroes doing yeah. sexual things because their sexual things oh we have to sell toys to these kids how can we sell toys to these kids if they're you know on tv doing sexual well, things that's not friendly well, advertiser spe friendly specific sexual things because harley quinn catwoman 
they can wear the sexiest outfits possible. Yeah, and that's the sex no big deal. It is okay, but but in this case, if Batman wants to do a little <laughs> meowing, he can, he's not allowed to because he's a superhero. Yeah, so, he's supposed to keep the superhero alpha image. So kind of like so, just to elaborate yeah, on let's, the story, let's, let's, let's dive into this here. <laughs> we don't there's need a, backstory or context. We got it. There's this. There's a Harley Quinn show on the DC Universe streaming platform, and uh, I guess on one of their more recent uh, season runs. They had a scene where they wanted Batman to go down on Catwoman and they were, you know, they were going to do it. And then D- DC was like, nah, Batman doesn't do that. And I'm like, what do you mean Batman doesn't do that? <laughs> like superheroes don't, they're selfish lovers. What do you mean? Yeah, it's too And basically their whole point was like, we got to sell these toys. But like the irony is if you fast, you know, rewind, like maybe what, four years, Batman, the killing joke, the killing joke came out on TV, like a movie. Hmm. Batman's piping Batwoman. What's wrong with that? So regular intercourse is okay, yeah. but oral is where we draw the line. Well, I don't know. It's, it's there's backwards. like different versions of Batman too. Like this streaming platform, is it mostly geared towards kids? Like is it like a childlike streaming platform or is it a bit darker? Like what's the theme of the show? I, From what I understand is it's a little bit more on the adult side. Yeah, okay. It's not then a, I, like a kid's show, but at the same time, because it's a cartoon, I guess they're all implied to they need to be kids friendly because like yeah. the platform has everything, I think. Okay. But yeah, see, I, man, I don't know. I, I understand trying to keep the image clean, but like it's, there's different versions of everything. Like right. So, uh, tinfoil hat expand. real quick. <laughs> Here it is. If you look at it from a complete business market, did you did you know that there's a Harley Quinn show at all? Have you heard <laughs> no, of this? No. You're, you're the, you're the biggest no Marvel DC nerd no. I know. You've never heard of it. Nobody's just, heard of this show. No one's no one's getting the DC streaming service. I can well, promise yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. After Who they, the fuck cares? They butchered everything. But that's what I mean. <laughs> Nobody's heard of this show. And then the execs just out of nowhere are like, oh, yeah, this is the reason this scene isn't in a show nobody watches. Now yeah. everybody's talking about it. Now people are going to start... Getting that streaming service just to take a look. As soon as you put the spotlight on it. And nobody nobody gives a shit if he would have went down on her or not. <laughs> but the fact that they didn't because Batman doesn't do that, superheroes don't do that, now people care. And yeah, now they're now gonna make money off of it. There's a point to talk about now. So it's it's weird. I don't know if it it probably was never even brought up. Some some asshole was probably just like thinking the way I am right now and they're like, Let's try it. Let's send out a tweet. Like <laughs> it was all marketing. Give some insider information. I uh, I just think the whole thing is just hilarious. And like I think the funniest joke that I heard regarding the situation, I think it was Philip DeFranco was like, um, what do you mean Batman isn't freaky? Look, he's got handlebars on his head for a reason. <laughs> what do you think that's for? And it's like, what? I never even thought oh, about that. <laughs> but then I'm like, man. I mean, you gotta be some kind of freak to have any, like bat and play. I don't know. You, what... you gotta look at him too. Where's the only part of his entire body that is available for sex? <laughs> He's just got the mouth. He's got oh, lips and tongue. No. That's it. He takes that's the belt all he off can and do. the crotch comes off too, and that's <laughs> yeah. his like real uniform. Oh no! <laughs> like he's, he's built for this. <laughs> he's got like one of those like quick draw where you know how it's like you know it's like gray suit and like black skivvies. <laughs> it's oh. like he just like rips it off. And it's just the blacks left. <laughs> that would be literally the most. That would just take it to a whole nother level. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's where you start hitting the hub. I like, it's no longer on a sport, <laughs> It's not a regular streaming service anymore. There's some premium access coming for that. But I only I'm sure want that's out there actually. I well, only want Adam yeah, West. Jamie, be, look that up. I, I only want Adam West to be that Batman though. <laughs> Like, he imagine? fucking would do it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, as an old man, he would do it. That Holy would be shit. so good. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Rest in peace. I don't know. know. But um, I know whatever. I was... Now I'm sad. <laughs> hey, Batman doesn't die. What are we talking about here? We gotta sell toys. He's alive forever. Like, yeah. Can't let this <laughs> um, oh man. Speaking of selling products. Kyle brought up Yo. this story with Seth Rogen. Yo, this guy's selling some vases. This guy is this? ripping people off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. He's stealing money. This. So these are the ugliest vases. I, I, if Dustin can pull them up here, uh, young yeah. young Dusty. Yeah, I got. Uh, I had like a, a, a quick quick view of so it, oh, like through through Dustin's. Basically, he just his he makes his makes his own va- uh, vases, and I think he, originally he just did them because he liked it because he's yeah he was he's just a, a stoner hipster just, stoner likes yeah. to do stupid shit. He's got too much money. I'm gonna build too a much fucking time. vase. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so these things look like absolute trash because he's he's he makes movies. 
which yeah. is words. He doesn't make art. He's not. He's an like artist. an artist, but he's he's, yeah, he's he's a different type of artist. Yeah. You can't so they, be good at they just look like trash. But uh, he ends up selling them. <laughs> they and just the, look like trash. You're so they're, ruthless. They're, well, they, they, like some of them actually look like your your back and your the thing you were talking about the blisters. That's basically oh, what the vase is. Just blisters all over, like uh, yeah. pink. I think the pink one. It's got little blisters everywhere. This one and not is even like especially properly shaped. Gross. Yeah. See. Okay. Okay. So what I'm looking at, <laughs> yeah, let's show the is camera. Is a big giant quick. dick <laughs> full of blisters. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it. I'll put this it on is, the okay. Uh, yeah, because like what I'm fantastic for the, <laughs> the the dick on the the thing. Yes, that's what that yes, looks like right no, there. Holy shit! Yeah, no. Because like the first thing I'm the thinking of is rock hard penis. At the end of the day, no. what is art? Like 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 you can make anything into art if people are willing to buy it. But at the, like, what the fuck is that? No. <laughs> what, what is what art? the fuck is that? What is art? Is what's the name on the back of it? If you have a yeah, if see. you have a Leonardo da Vinci you, whatever you have any big name person they make something it immediately becomes art because of their That's name they, because they have a popularity yeah so, so like ugly. it's th- there's like there's a fine line between like you're expressing yourself and you're just so like you you really enjoy your own yeah. work and, but that's just fucked and like, that's the thing is you you can make that stuff and you can sell it but what kind of price do you think you should be putting on that. Yeah, I would buy that at a flea market for like two dollars. Fifteen bucks would be like you're donating, right? For 12 yeah. Grand? So add three extra zeros yeah. on that. Yeah. You're looking at tens of thousands of dollars for the ugliest See, yeah, possible that's... thing with the name Seth on the bottom. Yeah. The lazy fuck didn't even write Seth Rogan. <laughs> like you, Seth like is you more can't artistic. even prove it. Like any any Seth could have wrote that on there. You can't even resell it. See, there's a couple here like this one. That one's okay. Where I like that one. It's not actually that bad. The ones yeah, that, that are cool. gross is what's with that blister style. That's yeah, disgusting. the blister cock. Yeah, that's that's really really weird. That's really gross. And like the other ones, like I've seen, there was another picture of a few others that were just like more artistic. And I was like, you know, that doesn't look bad at all. But those blister ones, oh my god, that's it's terrible. The, the thing I, I just I hate that he's like exploiting uh, exploiting people because <laughs> using his fame and to get what using your fame, you're famous. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to use that a little bit to gain. Gain upper hand in certain things, yeah. like to start his weed business. If he wasn't famous, it wouldn't be. He wouldn't have access to those people. That's fine. That's fair. You love weed. You're good at doing what you do. You do that. You're good at smoking it. <laughs> you, 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 you know he what you're doing. You you, you've been up. you've been practiced. You tried and true. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're doing here, and you're taking twelve thousand dollars from somebody when there's people that have spent their entire lives painting. Seeing if they can get a twenty dollar bill for one of them, and it's it's something that actually gets put up at a, at a house. That vase, if you're if you're moving, your mom is throwing that in the garbage because she assumes that it was garbage. Yeah, yeah that's there true. are people out there spending their entire lives, like the struggling artist idea of like everything they're putting everything into putting making these beautiful works of art, and they're barely making it by. Mm. And then this asshole comes and just sells this thing because he fucking can. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's a bit fucked. And and I feel like. Thinking about more, I feel bad like saying that it's his fault, but it's it's not even his fault that people are buying it from him. It's his fault that he's not kind of he could do more with it. Like telling somebody to do more when I'm not doing shit sounds patronizing. But if if he were to sell those things and be like, hey, I'm starting a gallery, and if you buy one of my vases, you can put up a painting in the gallery, whatever, and it could potentially be sold. You do something like that. Now you're you're giving back and you're. You're recognizing that there's a cause. The only people, the only reason people are buying this right now is your your name. It's yeah. not because of how much they love it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that just really seems like he just was really stoned and he made something. He's like, someone would fucking buy this for <laughs> sure. I respect the hustle though, but and, like, he's already so rich. I'm yeah, if like, I had, if I was making so. movies and selling weed, <laughs> like, and I just got stoned one day and I made a vase, and it's like, I'm sure someone will buy this. <laughs> and you just keep making them, like, yeah, man, fuck yeah, I'm an artist now. <laughs> I love that. It's good for him, Don I guess. Seth. But I'm done. <laughs> don't We're out. Okay. We're out. Um, I had a story I wanted to tell you guys. Um, it was, it's one of these stories that like I kind of just like I think back on it and I'm like, was I in the right or was I an asshole? Oh shit. Let's so, do this. We'll let, okay. We'll let you guys tell me where I can, where I may or may not have gone wrong. <laughs> so, when I was in university, um, I met a few people. We had a uh, on our dorm room floor. We had there's a good group of us. There's probably like eight or nine of us. And uh, there was this uh, this one girl. She was, like, one of the first girls I ever met there. And she was really cool. And I had a bit of a crush on her at the time. 
but she had a friend and her friend came from like the same town and I didn't know at the time, but her friend found out she was in a certain dorm and like they weren't like really good friends. She was like the weird friend and she like followed her basically and like requested mm. to be next to her. And then so when, you know, the girl I liked when she goes to co- goes away to college, finds out that her weird friend is actually neighbors and she's like, oh. Okay, <laughs> I thought I was leaving this town, but I guess we're here still. <laughs> so I didn't know that, but that kind of like adds to the the weirdness. Now, me and this girl, we started off pretty cordial. She thought I was funny. I thought I was funny. And then we had a class together. You thought you were funny. You, she was assuming that she thought <laughs> you were funny. So. She's like, I can tell this guy <laughs> thinks he's good. I, I got to tell him some things, reassure him. We, uh, we had a class together, and she was a complete homie. She, you know, I had a hard time with this class because it was an 8 a.m. class, and it was a philosophy, <laughs> the meaning of life. What? <laughs> what? It's got nothing to do with the class. It's, it, it was a hard class. Like, 8 a.m., I had to be up. <laughs> like, that. It, it was kind of a difficult class for me to really show off my skills. It's Fucking so guy, 8 a.m.? It was tough. You get, it was like, so 8 a.m.? You don't even drink. It was it, it was tough. Well, you had to get up at 6.30 and, like, <laughs> relax until there's 8? There's no way he's, yeah, he's, there's no way he's getting up at 6.30. Well, realistically, what ended up happening was I would wake up. I'd get ready for school. I would go to class. And I would fall asleep immediately. And as soon as I get, as soon as I, like, I'm in class, I'm literally, <laughs> like, I'm just dead. I'm knocked out. And the worst part was, is, like, I snore like a beast. So like, I'm just sitting there in the middle of the room. It's probably not the biggest room. It's eight in the morning. So everyone's kind of like on edge. I'm in bright red. Like that was our school colors. And I was an athlete. So like I'm in the middle of the room wearing all of our school colors. Like no one stands out more than I do. And I'm snoring in the front row. <laughs> and like the teacher's like trying to talk and just keeps like looking at me like, are you for real? And I'm just like, you know, it got to a point where I was like, you know what? It's actually rude for me to come to class because I know I'm going to sleep. (laughs) I know I'm going to fall asleep. So I, you know, I'm just here. I know you're just doing your job. Why don't we just meet in the middle and I'll show up when it's important and that's it. And so, you know, you were built. If you went to school right now with zoom classes this last year, you were built for that. (laughs) Like everybody's talking about oh, like we, we can't go into class and have a teacher not pay attention to all of us all at the same time. We have to be on zoom. Like most people are built for this, but sorry, keep going. Um, but so, you know, having a, a relationship with this girl paid off because, um, come test time, she's like, Hey, do you want my note package? And I nice. was like, I was like, Oh my God, thank you so much. That'd be so helpful. I've been really struggling. Um, you know, I, it, it was actually, Lies and deceit. <laughs> well, you know, it was actually her idea that I stopped coming to class because we would go together at first because we, Oh, we have the same class. Let's go together. Yeah. And we're like down the hall from each other, except she would get so embarrassed when everyone would be looking at me and she'd be like, everyone thinks we're like friends. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. It's <laughs> so, like that was half the reason why I stopped going. But anyway, oh. she's like, she's like, it, don't worry, like you don't have to worry about missing class. Like, I'll, here's my note package, and I was like, thank you. Jokes on her. I got a better grade on the final exam than she did. She's <laughs> just doing anything she, she can was, to protect she her was, image. She was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. come the next exam, um, she gave me like half the notes, <laughs> just because oh. she's like, fuck you, you don't need the whole note package. You can figure it out. And I'm like, whatever. I mean, I still got a B, so I was like, I don't give a shit. But anyways, so we were cool during class, but then like I started as I like spent more time with her, I was like, man, like she's really weird. And it wasn't just like goes to class, takes notes, <laughs> no, just no. helps out random people. It this, was more this like girl's crazy. It was more like little things like if you opened your door, she would be it's like she was sitting by her door waiting for someone to make a noise. And we were all in the same hallway. So if you open your door, mm-hmm. almost nine times out of ten, she'd open your door, open her door right after me. Like, Hey, how's it going? And you're like, good. I'm going to go take a shit. Like, what? Like, why? Yeah, that's a bit strange. And it'd be okay. at, every time of the day. It'd be in the morning. It'd be at night. I've done it at four in the morning. And she opened the door. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> and, like, if she ever, like, came to hang out with us, she just, like, overstay her welcome and just, like, wouldn't leave. And I don't know mm-hmm. if, like, if you guys ever had this experience directly, but, like, other people, like, maybe you were, like, chilling with friends. You're like, okay, uh, I got to start studying, though. I got shit to do tonight. Normal person. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll take off. Uh, text me later. Yeah, yeah, we'll link up. Her. Okay. And she just sit there. I'll and, wait. And you pull out your books. And you stop talking to her. You put your headphones on. You start 
writing. You look over your shoulder an hour later, she's still there just staring at the wall. Yeah, that's uh, that's weird. It was fucking That's because that's what she's doing in her dorm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me distance. that that's a, there was that's a so weird dark. friend that was following her? I feel I, like the, that, the there was a clip person. her there. This, this like, is the weird... Where did that person come from? This is the weird girl. What do you mean? Am I there was two people, didn't you say? So there was the girl that I had a crush on yeah. that initially introduced me to her. But then this is this is the weird girl. Your story. I, I was, that was oh, right off a cliff. I you thought the girl with the talking. crush turned out to be the weird girl, and then you just dropped off like oh. just some red herring of like there was another weird girl, but this girl ended up being even weirder. Okay, well clearly I'm a Little shit storyteller. Talking about the weird girl the whole time. Next. Anyway. Like, what the? <laughs> anyway. So I have no idea even where we missed. We're talking. We're talking where, about where the weird we, girl. Where do we? Where? Where would? Just shut up. Enjoy no, the ride. Was we're talking the, about this weird girl. Was the weird girl the one that was in class with yes. you? Yes. So this whole okay. story. I was telling you how I entered. How we met. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kyle. I was telling you how we met. I'm, I'm on your side with this one, Kyle. I was. Okay. I, I thought this was all about the crush. And yeah. She ended up being weirder than the weird girl, and I was waiting for it to tie back into. Yeah. The okay. weird girl must have been Anyways. even really weird, like even weirder. That was a great story. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Anyways, proud of you. Anyways, you almost so, made it through so, <laughs> without saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> so now that my flow has been destroyed. Anyways, um, so this girl, I start to not like her. The weird girl. The weird girl. Weird girl. I stopped liking her, and so when we would hang out as friends, like like the group of us now, like the dorm group, weird girl um, and crush girl. Yeah, they were all there. I would be like. Okay, yeah, um, I'll be right back. And then I would just leave. And I would just like any time that this weird just girl was trying there, to find it out anywhere you I can. would just I just dip. Yeah. And so, you know, all the other people that we we're hanging out with were like, yo, like, where'd you go? And like, ah, I'm gonna do that in terms of feeling it. Yeah, just whatever. I would just dip. And I was doing this so consistently. And it was got to a point where I was like, I wasn't even really waiting. Like normally you'd like give it like five or ten minutes and be like, pretend like it's not related. But sometimes like the door would open, I'd see your face, and I would start grabbing my shit. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, I was like, yeah, something came up. And so naturally, you know, there's like, you know, a decent amount of people, they start noticing. They're like, yeah. do you not like her? Like, why do you like get up and leave the moment you see her face lately? And I'm just like, I'll be honest, I'm just not a big fan. I think she sucks, and I don't. Just, I don't want to be like the one to be like, "Oh my god, we should stop hanging out with her because she sucks." You should hang out with me and not her. Let's like let's isolate her. I was like, I don't want to be that guy, so I'll just isolate myself. I'll remove myself from the situation because I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> so, Good guy, fucking Dustin. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, Dustin, like you're overreacting. Like, she's not that bad. Like I don't know why you're being like this. You're kind of being a dick. And I was like. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Don't worry. Well, like a week later, I'm like not hanging out with them. They're like, Dustin, we need to talk. And so I get like bombarded in my room by a few people. I'm like, yo, she fucking sucks. <laughs> and I was Weird like, girl intervention. And I'm like sitting in my room like with my fit hands like this. I'm like, mm, yes. Go on. Tell me why you've <laughs> just come to this conclusion. <laughs> and oh, so shit. now everyone thinks she sucks, but we can't get rid of her. So we go talk to the girl that's known her forever, and she tells us, like, yeah, like, this girl's fucking psycho. She followed me to university. She doesn't let me fucking go. She's like, I can't even leave my room like the rest of us, but it's even more so with her. I can't even leave my room with her out asking, where are you going? Like, she opens her door. She's right next door. Where are you going? She can hear her in her room. Like, you talk about people can hear you in an apartment. Ooh, she can hear her in her room. I'm triggered now. <laughs> and she <laughs> immediately, if you, if you wake up, she get like she see, hears you in the morning rumbling around. You get a good morning text. It's like she's like some yeah, stalker. Oh it was very well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like I'm feeling empathetic. She's got like attachment issues, man. I'm like that poor girl. She clearly <laughs> has something going she's on. She's got like she's just yeah, just looking for a friend, man. So then I'm thinking, McKay. So what do we do? We all live in the same hallway. We all want to hang out, but we don't want to hang out with her. We can't just like all leave at the same time. And she's like, oh, where are you all going? Obviously, she's going to be like, okay, I'll grab my stuff. Like, she thinks we're all friends still. Yeah. And if the moment that happens, like, I actually am going somewhere else now. <laughs> so, yeah. like, how do we do this? So now I'm, you know, I'm out here trying to be a secret agent. I'm like, how can we Orchestrating scheme? a fucking escape This plan. is, you know, Ocean's Eleven. Just yeah. let's go get let's burgers or something. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> let's go do literally anything else without her. Jesus, and so man. I'm like, all right, Jessica. You leave at 4.05 p.m. with your keys and your books, and you think you're going 
you tell her you're going to meet with your professor. You say you got a 4.30 appointment. Okay, sure. What do I do with my books? Drop them off at Sean's room. He's just down the hall beside the elevator. Drop them there Holy so you don't actually have to carry fuck. them. Boom. Craig, you go down the hallway five minutes later and you go down the stairs and you just dip. You're right next to the staircase. Just dip. You're gone. You're a ghost. They're not going to think anything of it. I, I'm going to go to the washroom a few minutes before all of this and I'm just going to go out the second entrance of the washroom on the other side of the dorm hallway and I'm just going to go straight to the staircase and dip as well. Girls, the remaining girls, <laughs> you guys both have class and you're both going, uh, to link up with someone I'm that you fucking have fucking literally class. picturing like cut scenes of like just dipping down all these yeah. cut scenes happening in a fucking yeah. movie you're the only oh two taking the elevator because that's the natural thing to do when you're going somewhere we always take the elevator so you guys actually take the elevator to keep things normal while the rest of us just disappear like ghosts once you're all coast is clear and everyone's gone around the building meet at the front of the building away from her window and then we'll link up and we'll go somewhere this guy could commit a murder mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure he could <laughs> If he puts his mind to something, yeah. he's really capable of this guy, this guy could kill a man. <laughs> and, we would uh, never know. And you know what we hung out with? We hung out without her for at least three months till the end of the school year, and then it was gone. Wow, eh? Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, so, what's going through her mind during those? Just, everyone's just so busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just keep staring at this wall. It's like, am I a ghost? I, I mean, I know that she ended up transferring, so clearly she was like, clearly no one likes me here. I'm going to go somewhere else. So Yeah, looking she for something else. She just went to a different university completely after that. That's crazy, though. Okay, I'm. I but I'm, am I turned that story around? Am I the asshole though? That's the question. So, or I mean, am I justified? So, you're an asshole for starting that whole story as if it was about your crush, and really fucking up my whole yeah. mind because I'm like, where the fuck are we going? But, this, but the story <laughs> twist. But uh, but you're not an asshole for what you did. You're a genius. You, I thought you made you made your friends' you lives made the best, better. You made the best with you can you, with it, <laughs> like in an asshole way. But and you you did it without treating her like shit. I, I long like, term. Her switching schools, she got to have friends for another at yeah. least four to five months. <laughs> Until they figured so it out. Like, every every school year, wins. she got a new one. But if you wouldn't have done that, she could have been there for three years not having friends. <laughs> she was like the first subscriber on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I changed. Just watching. Well, honestly, I changed names like of some people, and then I forgot I was changing names. And so a few of those names are accurate. I think you only said one name. <laughs> just so she that. knows. She knows. <laughs> I didn't say her name, so... That's who knows. I don't think I have her on anything anymore. So honestly, I think most of them think I'm dead. I don't know why that would be the conclusion. <laughs> who knows? You're just always eating oh, donuts. Yeah, just I don't have you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, put, sometime. I don't have you on Instagram. Oh, you must be dead. Yeah. <laughs> do not exist. That's pretty much how our world works today. You know, everyone's just got some fucking weird idea of where things come from. Speaking of that transition, yeah. John Stewart came on the uh, on the Tonight Show the other day. Yeah, and he Colbert, has, uh, show. Colbert a, show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This was and, a different one. And he had some shit to say about uh, where he thinks COVID came from, and I thought it was hilarious. It How? was completely spot on because, like, <laughs> it wasn't like he went out on a limb. He just said straight up, "Okay, so the Wuhan virus, the coronavirus <laughs> that came out of Wuhan, China." Who did we who do we look to to investigate this? <laughs> How about the Wuhan coronavirus lab? <laughs> Maybe let's check with them and see what they say. I was completely unaware there was a lab. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Have, has anyone like done, has anyone looked into this? Is there actually? <laughs> yes, the, the, I assume so, so, but I'm not so the lab, it. The, yeah. the lab that's there is um like it was. They talked about it right away when COVID first dropped. That there is a lab there that deals with COVID, yeah there was there but they I, it was supposed to be everything i the, think it was a disease center yeah because like i'm pretty sure even canada has one it's like a level four lab or something like that yeah. there's one in canada and the the idea behind it is that they bring in viruses and uh basically boost them full of steroids to see how bad they can actually get yeah they're, they're to work to contain them. them yeah so uh like because i think the the state's uh, Bonnie Henry version is uh, Dr. Fauci, and apparently he has he's one of the people that signs off for that place. So he kind of he knew that it was possible that it came from there. Didn't say anything. Whole other bag of words. But John Stewart just basically came out and said, "This is clear. Everybody's saying it. Everybody's been thinking it. This is where it must have came from. Why are we gonna ask the the people that are pr- we're pretty sure created this virus? Why are we gonna ask them where it came from? And when they say." A bat? 
<laughs> we're all we all just agree. He makes a good point. You yeah. the, like one random bat gets eaten in a wet market where everything gets eaten, and that <laughs> that the whole world's done now. That's what we believe. I think it, it almost kind of like speaks to like the like casual racism that just like not necessarily and when i say that i don't necessarily mean like oh like the whole world's racist towards each other but like people from different parts of the world have different things that make them unique and for us to acknowledge them i don't think is inherently racist but what i mean though is that when people they say things like oh yeah those fucking chinese people were just eating bats again we were just like yeah they do that (laughs) and it's like (laughs) i i I believe that that makes sense (laughs) and we're just like yeah sure (laughs) <laughs> that's acceptable better than the you know oh the the lab of the virus accidentally leaked the virus that also makes sense but we were no that's a conspiracy get your tinfoil hat yeah. we're like no they definitely ate get, fucking bats. people getting deplatformed <laughs> off youtube for saying it and then now everybody's like oh no no this is pretty, we're pretty sure this is what happened Wait, that, yeah that makes a lot more sense actually and I then just, when you it's... when you think about it even further like yet again i have a huge tinfoil hat so this is a, this is a first virus that has a vaccine within a year. Could it be because they've been testing this for however long? Th- if you're gonna test for something and make it worse and worse, you're gonna have something t- uh, like a vaccine or a cure on hand for those people that are working with it in case they get it. You're gonna be well, actively working in case of the worst case scenario. To to counter that, even though I'm I think I'm on your side. I I, I I'm intrigued with this story, but like. Like the polio vaccine and everything like that. We didn't get that in a year because that was a long time ago. And our science yeah, yeah. was not very progressive where now, like our, where we are with science is just so significantly advanced. To, like it's, it's an exponential advancement, right? Mm, like we're getting yeah. smarter quicker. So the ability to uh, like take something like a virus and figure out its compound and exactly how it's made up and then being able to counter that in a sense and like it, it, it makes sense being able to figure all that out, but it, like it, it's in the, same the fact way. that there's a fucking disease place <laughs> in fucking Wuhan. It's also a different kind that's of weird. vaccine that we've never used before, so that also it's like, RNA or something like that. And that's, that's a, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, instead you. of and using that, we've apple. never done that shit. Yeah, but, so that also had to do with why it went so and, fast. And pretty much the within the exact same timeline, four different businesses were like, oh yeah, we created our own virus. Yeah, our, I don't our like, own it's vaccine. Like it's we all have our own and you can buy it from us, send, selling it to all the different governments yeah. as if we're like, we're all supposed to be sacrificing and then these all these four huge businesses are like, oh yeah, I came up with a vaccine, but like, you're gonna have to pay everything you have. <laughs> this fucking Every virus comes out like, oh, no way. We just so <laughs> happen to have this fucking antidote. <laughs> Isn't that strange? And, <laughs> Here you go, guys. And the smart ones made up random names like Pfizer, AstraZeneca. Those sound like fucking like good scientific names. <laughs> I'd, I'd Johnson and name. Johnson fucked up. <laughs> like you don't make. You well, that's because that's do a brand this. you believe yeah, in. Yeah, you make Johnson baby shampoo. Yeah, you baby make oil. We don't trust you. You had they had like six <laughs> blood clots. Every other one probably had twenty. But they're like Johnson and Johnsons. They clearly don't know what they're doing. Back them off. <laughs> kick, kick them out. <laughs> We get these big three back in here, monopolize the money. <laughs> it just, I, science is clearly at a higher level and they can probably come up with things a lot faster. But I don't think that they could, that like, especially with the, the things about talking about pregnant women, children, uh, and like knowing the long-term effects of things. They, they basically say, no, it's, it's safe for kids. Like pregnant women, they're, they're supposed to get the vaccine. Yeah, that part's a bit fucked because up. They, it's... Because it, they're... Their respiratory whatever illnesses. Uh, when when you're pregnant, you uh, you can't breathe as well because you're doing everything for both of you. But they so they advise you to get it and act as if like there's nothing that might transfer when like yeah, you can't eat you can't eat honey. There's warning labels on kid. supplements and shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> everything has a warning label for so, pregnant so women. So that's where I think they must have had more than a year to kind of look into this because I can't imagine within a year them just being like nope. I think 100% kids will be okay. Well, I think, like, specifically, and this is, again, this is, like, my first thought of opinion, but, oh, yeah. um, like, it's the risk-to-reward ratio of, like, okay, do we try and save two lives with the ability of having one life, being the child, then being able to grow up healthy, mm. or do we say, 
no, you definitely shouldn't take it. But then if they do get sick, that's two people that that die. Right. Yeah. So it's the kind of the morality issue of like maybe it's not the, necessarily the research backing it. It's more about morality based where, well, it might affect you, but the payoff would be much better because then at the very least your child has a better chance yeah. of making it right. I can understand. So morality is for us. Research is for doctors. They're, they're <laughs> supposed to listen to the science only. They that that's I think that's the bigger the, problem. Didn't, didn't Jurassic Park quote that? that you were you were you were too concerned figuring out what you could do, and instead oh. you should have been thinking about why or something. Yeah. Well, well, you sh- book if you should, thank yes. you. Yeah, 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 I didn't actually know. I it. think I, um, know. I think the thing too is you know, as a man of science, I follow the science nine times out of ten, and I think it's you know as much as I support the vaccine, I also don't think it's responsible to say that we have understandings of the long-term effects of anything because yeah like i, I find the whole thing new. very weird so like, even, even if you got the vaccine you don't really know the long-term effects you yeah. don't know if they're good you don't know if they're bad you yeah. don't know if there's any there's a vaccine or like people get the flu shot and that's supposed to help you but the flu changes every year yeah so this is just like a much faster stronger version yeah. of the flu that's way worse so yeah. Just as irresponsible as I think to say that the you know it has bad long term effects, I think it's just as irresponsible to say that there's none. Uh, Yeah, that's that's, kind of where I'm at. You can't you can't know for sure, and as Mm -hmm. long as you know that you can't know for sure, then whatever, make your choices. It is what it is. Yeah. Um. But I feel like that's enough COVID talk for today. I'm gonna go myself. (laughs) That's that's (laughs) the beginning part of it. (laughs) Having uh, the the big thing that I found with John Stewart coming kind of going on there and saying it is that it kind of. It represented, again, a common theme, something else we'll probably be talking about. But uh, So he used to have the night show, and he was kind of the first, not, maybe not the first, but one of the more prolific uh, comedic uh, news anchors kind of thing. Cause yeah, his he was show more was, about it was, news it was about it was, a, it was a combination of the news and satire. He, he kind of, he would over embellish things, mm-hmm. but it was still kind of like factual. Well, and yeah, it exposed the ridiculousness of things. Yes, That's, exactly. Yeah, it was a so, great show. I was, so I was such a fan of that. The person that kind of was below him and like kind of following his footsteps was Stephen Colbert. Yeah, with he the was Colbert his first, Report. first anchor, first yeah. co-host or something like that. Or Yeah, yeah. So, so once he got his own show, uh, Colbert, he kind of, he made his own uh, persona. Mm-hmm. So, he was himself as the anchor, and then he was the Colbert Report guy that would go over and above everything, tons of satire, like just kind yeah. of goes crazy on everybody, but only the same same thing as you were saying, uh, where it's still factual, still actual news, but he's being funny while he's it, doing it. Accentuating the ridiculousness of just <laughs> exactly. exposing things. So then where the two career paths change and how this is an awkward interaction is the fact that Jon Stewart walked away from from the money and from being a uh, like kind of a shill, kind of being there because they want you have to kind of toe a company line because this is I think eight or nine eight or nine years ago. It was so kind of the beginning of when you have to say the right thing, do the right thing at all times. Whereas Colbert doubled down, retired his alter or, or his persona, alter ego persona, yeah, yeah. yes, and uh, went full business. Business attire, we're going to talk exactly what the right talking points are. I'm on this side. I won't even joke about being on the other side. So him going on there was, it was almost like a big fuck you and a reminder that he's more free. Because Colbert probably would have said the exact same thing if he thought he was actually allowed to. If he had his old, old show and he was able to blame it on his persona, he would probably say the same thing. But because he is who he is now... If he said it, he risks that cancel culture, the the people kind of getting the backlash and the, the higher ups saying, hey, that's not what the fuck we said you could say anymore. Yeah. So listening to that conversation from my perspective of like, I watch a lot of behind the scenes on like how video productions are made and everything. So that uh, that conversation looked relatively like I don't want to say scripted, but they were very well timed in the point of like Colbert was able to get him to stop to add to his point to then get uh steven to then add on like the 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 back and forth was yeah, very so. very well timed so i don't want to say it was scripted or anything but it kind of like i feel like they both knew exactly what they were going to say to each other beforehand okay. in in a sense of like maybe colbert was agreeing with it and it was their way of kind of being able to mm. there needs to be one person who is beyond the like like really really aggressively agreeing with one thing and the other person's trying to like 
have the more reason of like, hey, like, is that like, are, like, are you sure? Like, what, what do you think about this? And yeah. then that gives us uh, Stephen another chance to or uh, John Stewart, sorry, another chance to then dive deeper into a different part of the subject. Yeah. And it was a really, really good back and forth banter between the two. But it really seemed like it was like it was planned kind of thing. Right. Where yeah. it was like they had a message. They both had a message to say. Um, but there can't be two people going, this is what we fucking believe in. It has to be this yeah. kind of back and forth. And one more time, it, it could also, like, exactly what you said, but John Stewart's the only one that is allowed to say that. So, 100%. like, they both, yeah. both like yeah. you said, they both probably do agree, and the fact that they're friends, like, they probably did talk beforehand, hey, I'm going to say this. I know you can't. You're allowed to say whatever you need to do, but I'm going to say this. And I feel like you agree, and let's just go out there and do it. I'll keep you Yeah, so it's clean. like um, Stephen Colbert, he has to be the man of reason talking to the crazy guy, but the crazy guy is the one who makes more sense kind of thing, mm. right? And it's a really cool twist on it because, like, shit, like, what he was saying was, like, it, it, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. And I'm not the one to kind of go, like, oh, no, I believe that. Like, that's that. He, like, he's speaking straight truth, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but... That made a lot of sense. And I think that their their banter between each other really accentuated it kind of thing, right? Mm. So Yeah, so it was, neither of them really, came really out looking bad. It, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So he, um, John Stewart still had a comedic act to it all, but he was also the crazy guy just speaking nonsense, but it, it made a lot of sense, mm. a lot of sense. I think one thing that I took from it is, I first off, I just thought it was funny. I didn't really think too much of it because... I didn't think whatever this message was was really that important because most of the time he was just, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, was he not just talking about where they think COVID came from? Like, uh, much yeah, it? yeah. It just, um, like, it, it, it just, uh, it looked like they were going out of their way to just try and put that on national television kind of thing of like, hey, for everyone who is very serious in this one belief system, here's another belief system for you. Yeah. And they, they, they executed it very well. Now, that being said... What does that really do? Does it make you feel like the government has lied to you? Maybe. Has the government lied to you before? All the time. What is 9-11? <laughs> yeah. What is, the government lies it's, uh, all, all Yeah, it, it comes down to, I guess, that you, you could argue that it comes down to morality of, like, what's more important, protecting the people or exposing the truths? Right. And, like, what would happen uh, if we expose those truths? Do would we there need be to, revolts? And, and, like, oh, like, you know, it came from China. I think most of us were pretty aware it came from China. Was it an accident? Was it intentional? I mean, I don't really think it was intentional. Was it intentional that it was created? Possibly. If it was made in a lab, it, obviously they were trying to do something. Yeah. Did they intend for it to leak out? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm kind of like, mm, probably not. No. I can't imagine there was some intentional bio warfare against the entire globe, including your own country, was ever intentional. Because yeah. they lost lives, it's the too. the new world order, man. <laughs> yeah. It's the great reset. And it almost, to Government me, planned. it almost has a, it almost serves in a negative way because there's so many people that are just like, those fucking Chinese people, and they're just Seriously, pointing at that yeah. race. It was, and now it we're was, talking about like, I would say more so in the states than in Canada, but it got very racist in the beginning. Yeah, very and, racist. And we even had we talked about a couple weeks back, like Jeremy Lin talking about you know all the increased uh, rates of Asian crime, and it's mm -hmm. like like crime against Asians. Sorry, not Asian crime. <laughs> that's, that's not what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like the racism was pretty pretty real. Yeah, and so it's like. Does it really matter where it came from? Like, are we going to crucify these scientists? Probably not. They're all government employees, it sounds like. So what's going to happen? Yeah. It doesn't really serve much purpose to me. So to me, I just thought, I just took the jokes as it was. It was funny. He had a good bit. They had a good show. Yeah, so I, I feel like serious. at the end of the day, wherever it came from, because I even remember when it first happened, like they were even called, like they were talking about the whoever had gotten it was called patient zero. And that's usually implying that this is the first known case that we're aware of. And it could have been before, but we're not really too sure. Right. And it was like they were really accentuating that point. Um, but whatever happened from patient zero onwards, like we, we got to fix it. We got to we, we ha we're, we're now in this world where we're kind of dealing with it. And there whether people take it serious or not, there are some people who are dying from it. And there are people who are taking it very serious. There are people who are taking it too serious. But we're all here. And we got to we got to figure out what the fuck to do now. <laughs> Figuring out what the fuck to yeah. do next. Um, so we're gonna have a quick uh, transition here too because we had another thing we wanted to talk about. Um, now it's a little sports, but don't uh, don't turn it off yet because we uh, <laughs> we we need we're looking for public opinions to see if we're crazy or if you guys agree as well. Now Kyle had acknowledged the other day that this playoff series with the NBA 
has been quite the special season. Um, everyone is used to our usual playoff contenders in every sport, you know, in football. Oh, it's Tom Brady and the Patriots every year. Oh, the Steelers are there. And oh, now Kansas City is going to be top of the pyramid every year. It's pretty standard. We're used to it. It's kind of boring. You know, in hockey, it's the same deal. You got a couple teams throughout a decade that are always the top team. And in basketball, you know, you're often going to see a LeBron James team. You're often going to see another, you know, secondary super team. And as of recently, Golden State's everywhere. Steph Mm -hmm. Curry's putting on a show. This year... We're in our final four now. We're talking today. As we talk today, we're in our Eastern and Western Conference finals. We got four teams left. All the super teams are gone. All the big market teams are gone. Mm -hmm. And we've got four teams that either A, have never been there at all, or B, haven't been there in a hot minute. Mm -hmm. Does this make basketball or does it make sports better when it's all new blood and it's teams that you're not used to seeing? Or is it worse, as LeBron James says, because your favorite players aren't necessarily there. From an outside perspective, I would say having the new people in makes it way more interesting. Like uh, f- for myself, where I really enjoy watching sports, but I'm not into it. I couldn't say a, a single player. Like I, I, I don't know enough. Um, I just know like go sports, do the thing, get the point. <laughs> sports. Um, go <laughs> sports. Um, but like with that being said, if I know that there's like like new blood and everything, like I'm going out of my way to watch that person, even though I don't know who specifically they are. It's like, oh shit, yeah. Like let's see what they can do, right? Like that's that's gonna get me as a new viewer. I'm gonna be watching that because I'm gonna be more into it because this person is just starting out. So that's 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 how I see that for sure. If if I know that there's a, a like a basketball game and it's the same people playing over and over, I don't know who any of them are. I don't really care because they probably played relatively similar to the last game. And like, but if there's new people and I don't know who they are, but I know that they're there, it's like, oh shit, I want to see what they can do. Like, I'm, that's going to get me into the sports. So I'm gonna, I might end up watching a couple more games because then I want to learn a little bit more about this person. And then that might turn into, oh shit, now here I am learning about fucking basketball and I never knew I was into it. And now I'm really into it because I just, this is my new favorite player. Right. And so that's that's how I kind of see that situation. Yeah, I, I think that totally makes sense. I think for me, what I, I, you know, relate to is the psychology behind it. You know, you think of it's kind of reminiscent of a year ago with Miami Heat playing the Lakers. The Miami Heat team, as everyone knows, was a pretty weak team. They weren't highly touted. They didn't have the big name players. They had like one superstar and that was it. Everyone else was pretty low key. And they made it all the way to the finals and they fought hard in the finals but they didn't win but they got there and for the most part everyone's tuning in to watch miami because Mm. they were exciting Mm. and what i think of is all of these big market teams the lebron james teams every year those are the you know that's the mountain you're climbing like you always have to play these teams and if you lose those teams go on and play yeah But now we're in a situation where all of these young guys and these new teams that haven't had the long term success and not I mean, it's not to say that all their players are new players because there's some veterans that are helping carrying these teams. Shout out to your boy, Chris Paul, who's probably having a career season right now. Definitely not your boy. So I'm glad you said mine. Yeah. Yeah. Not my boy. Your boy. I'm not letting you even. I don't even want you saying his name, honestly, (laughs) but continue. I mean, he's playing better than he's capable of. If that makes sense, oh, <laughs> if, that, if that makes any sense at all, that's fine. That's fine. But what I'm say, what I'm trying to say though is like, I see a bunch of young guys that have finally conquered their demons. They finally have hit the precipice and they're on the brink of greatness. Mm-hmm. And they're they're climb like the climax of their season is all coming right now, and they're at the hottest streak they've been on their entire yeah. life. This is their moment to show the world what they've got. And they've got a moment to be great. Yeah, absolutely. I and see to that. see a young athlete like Devin Booker give everything he's got, a guy like Giannis, I'm not even trying to say his name on air. It's a terrible attempt. But to see these guys go on and they've been having good seasons. We've thought they're good players, but they just they still haven't had the season success. Mm-hmm. To see them go off and be like, yo, this might be your career defining moment. What do you have to say about that? Watching athletes, that's my favorite part, is watching people become great and take advantage of their moment to be great. I love watching that. And that's for all sports. And that's that's what I watch for when I'm not watching football, when I'm watching things like basketball and hockey. I want to see great players and young players take their moment and seize that moment and mm-hmm. see how they how they can recover if they don't. That's what I like to see. So to me, 
like you said, I think it's way more interesting. I think it's fun. I think it's cool to see. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, the best teams are the teams that showed up to play and won. They're the ones that need to be there. And if the old guys had a bad game, they got hurt, bad luck. You don't always get lucky. That's life. LeBron James, you didn't make it this time. Tough shit. Maybe next year. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's washed up. He's doing just fine. (laughs) Yeah. Let these guys do it. They earned it this year. I don't think it's boring at all. I think it's great. So I agree. (laughs) <laughs> and that's uh, it next story <laughs> uh, so so these playoffs they've kind of uh going into them because they last year in the bubble they obviously had to change everything they did for basketball all together no crowds this year coming in they introduced a playoff tournament where the bottom two uh to explain it the seventh and eighth seed normally the top eight from each conference go to the playoffs this year the 7th and 8th seed would play each other for a spot, and the ninth and 10th would play whoever wins that plays the loser of that next spot yeah, okay. to basically build up a mini tournament to get in to kind of prove yourself at the bottom. That makes sense. Okay. So with that being said, the teams had a little bit more incentive to really push for a, a top 10 spot instead of a top 8, where a lot of times if you don't think you're making top 8, you'll sell sell off your players to different teams to try and get better draft picks, okay. get a lower okay. uh, lower record. So throughout the entire year, you now have more effort by at least six to eight teams than you would normally have. So everybody kind of has to be on, on, their, on their toes and ready to go. Going into the playoffs, uh, team, uh, the, the two teams that... Uh, holy shit... The two teams that were supposed to be the top grand grandiose teams are Golden State Warriors, Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. They had to play each other to get in, which is unfounded. Golden State doesn't make it. So immediately you take Steph Curry, who's one of the biggest, brightest names in the NBA, you take him out of the equation. And now okay, yeah, yeah. So now right away, like for me watching as a as a hype like a hyper fan, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Because when you're looking at a series, you're like one guy like Steph Curry or LeBron James, they could potentially carry their team to the final even if they don't have anybody on their side because they're just they're just capable of showing up in those moments. But once somebody like that's out, now it's like who else can do that? Yeah, that it changes is, the dynamics. Is, is there somebody new that might show up? Yeah. And that's that's where guys like Devin Booker are showing up and he's putting up 20, 28 to 30, 30, 40 points a game. Where he's never never been to the playoffs, he's never done oh, this really, before, eh? and now wow. they're looking at they're they're up two nothing in this the series right now, yeah. and they're looking like they might win the entire championship. He's on the Phoenix Suns it, through Arizona. Nobody gives a shit about Arizona. Phoenix hasn't been good since Steve Nash was there and it changed basketball. But <laughs> casual Steve Nash fan. Real real quick, real quick. <laughs> but uh, so nobody cares about them. But now everybody has to. Yeah, because they're yeah. proving they might be the best team. Seriously. They don't. They don't have that top guy until now. Maybe they do. Devin Booker might be a top five, top ten player in the league, and he's showing that because he's had the chance to have a spotlight on him as the biggest scorer. Then on the other side, you've got or well, facing them in the finals. It's uh, in the conference finals. It's L.A. Clippers. So as much as they aren't a powerhouse, a big market, they're still from L.A. They're the ugly steps stepped out of the Lakers, but they're still from LA. They've still got big names, but this is kind of a moment where it, it's a changing of the guard. So they've got a guy named Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. They're both early thirties, kind of in their prime at the end of their prime. They've been all stars. They've been defensive player. They've, they've been the guy and it's looking like they might be losing that step. And okay, this is, yeah, yeah. and Devin Booker, is gaining them. He's taking those steps, and DeAndre Ayton is the center. He's been going off. He's had a. He nobody's talked about him, but uh, for people that know, Luka Doncic and Trey Young are two of the best young players in the NBA. Okay. DeAndre Ayton got drafted above them. Really? No, yeah. nobody talks about it because he's in Arizona. He's not getting those <laughs> those names. So they've got two of the best players ever, or not ever, two of the best young players in the NBA with Chris Paul on top. So they, they're showing what they're capable of because there's some guys that just missed that boat. Steph Curry didn't have the chance to bounce them in the first round, and now they have a chance to kind of go as far as possible. The other side, you have Giannis, like you're, whoops, Giannis, like you were saying, he's 
he's been established. He's been an MVP. He's like 26, and he's finally breaking through and could potentially win his championship and prove he's one of the best players ever. Mm -hmm. Against him is Trey Young, who I just mentioned. that He's been in the league for three or four years. He wasn't even supposed to make the playoffs. And he's he's showing out that he might be one of the best scorers in the NBA as well. So basically, these playoffs are spotlighting and a coming out party for the next generation of basketball. Yeah, see, that's really cool. Like, the, you don't need a big three anymore because the players are so good mm -hmm. that they can beat a big three. They're capable of doing it. So it changes the entire dynamic of basketball with the with this one set it's of a new playoffs. generation coming in man yeah that's, th that's really cool i think it's interesting because it's almost like a turning of the page where you mm -hmm. just like it reshapes the nba yeah. in the sense that you thought that these were the best players but there might not be anymore yeah. and now a, you don't know who's the best new record books coming in and, and so i think i think that's why i think it's so interesting i think it's really cool that we can have so many people have their moment because like you say you're talking about all these young players these, that's what I'm talking about when I say this is their chance to be great. Giannis mm -hmm. has won an MVP twice now. Everyone already thinks he's a good player, but is he good enough to take his team to the finals? Yeah, yeah, okay. Can we compare him to LeBron James, who's, who's done that 100,000 times? <laughs> <laughs> Are they in the same conversation? You know, obviously that's a big jump to just compare him to LeBron, but he wants to be that. Yeah. How do you be that if you can't win? Well, yeah. this is his moment to is finally the, is silence the next the doubters. greatest coming up kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, that, and that's, so that's really interesting. I, lo I love seeing that. I huh. think it's great. Um, so I have my only question. Miami. Did uh, Finkel play in Miami? Because all I could think of is... Uh, Finkel? Yeah. All I could think <laughs> of was... Uh, <laughs> fucking the Ace Ventura. He's been trying. Is that Miami Dolphins are you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. That was the first references. thing I could think of was when he was uh, spinning was the back the of my hair. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I remember it in Ace Ventura. As soon as you mentioned the word Miami, I'm like, Finkel. Who is Finkel? I know him. <laughs> Dan Marino was in it, the though. same movie, but... <laughs> that's so tough. That, that's really. I had to get it out because it was in the back of my head. <laughs> no, no I, I problem. Um, about Finkel. So... But it's... yeah, no, no, no. That's, a, that's, like, that's really, really cool. It's uh, there's There's new records... About to be broken. That's how I feel. Uh, and I, I've I've said it. I've said it before, and this is kind of the first time it's actually happened. To to be a champion, to change the page, you have to beat LeBron, mm -hmm. and it just I hasn't agree. been happening. It the people will beat him in the finals. I think in the the thirteen years that he's made it to the playoffs, he's lost to one team that didn't win the championship, mm -hmm. or at least make it to the finals. So you have to beat LeBron to make it. And if Devin Booker and them win right now, it's gonna kind of prove you still have to beat them the next year but this could be the opening that people are looking for like okay yeah like uh beforehand it's real quick history not not in intense or anything <laughs> but like shaquille o'neal and kobe bryant they're together they win uh three straight championships he goes to miami he wins a championship d, d wade and then he slowly starts declining and now that opens the door for more teams kobe bryant himself he started declining opens the door for more teams uh, Michael Jordan, he gets his six six rings, and then he starts declining. New phase. You're, you now that's where Kobe Bryant and Shaq take over. Mm -hmm. There's always a moment where new people, new teams take over, and this might be it. That's really interesting. I see that as like like when you're the best, you're just focused on being the best. You're mm -hmm. like you're focused on being at the very top, right? And everyone else is focused on being as good as that person. Where yeah. it seems like there's this new wave of people that they're not focused on being as good as that next person. They're focused on being the best. Yeah. And there, that's there's just that paradigm shift that's happening, right? Speaking of uh, tough things. What? Sick transition. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> yeah, just, just say, I am transitioning now. I got something now. tough for you. Okay, so we saw this thing online the other day, too. Uh, that was the most difficult sports ranked. Mm. And I know Kyle has some Everything feelings. Is. Everything was terrible. <laughs> Kyle has some I have feelings. to pull it back up. Um, I'll, for those on watching on YouTube, I'll, I'll put it on the screen so you guys can read it. But I'll just go over the quick top ten. Um, they said the most difficult sport was boxing. Which most difficult, most difficult. So they put first off, I guess. Okay, I'll just read sense? them before. That's exactly what I'm just thinking. Uh, I feel like we should we, just go top 10 because, yeah, I'm just going to talk about the top yeah. 10. I'm not going to go all 50 because that's a lot. Most of them are like very specific, like the high jump event in track and field. <laughs> but, um, so one boxing, two hockey, three football, four basketball, five wrestling, six martial arts, seven tennis. Eight gymnastics, nine baseball slash softball, and ten soccer. Okay, wait, 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 wait. 
I dare anyone from any one of those sports to jump out of a helicopter and go snowboarding down a mountain. <laughs> Like down, down, like one of like, like you, you like a, a mountain you can't get to without a helicopter. <laughs> and, and honestly, that's kind of my biggest thing is how do you compare yeah. so many things that have so many unique skill sets and yeah. are so unrelated? Yeah. It's, there's it's just, there's so many false equivalencies. Like you can't compare archery to football. Like what the fuck are you, what are you talking yeah, about Yeah, that's here? like, that's, that's an, that's a, a colonist or, well, uh, someone, <laughs> someone's trying to come up with just an article just for clicks because it's part of their job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cause like, yeah, like I, 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 I'm sure we could jump into the points of like what makes each one of those difficult because with boxing, like the endurance behind boxing, being able to last essentially eight rounds, like that's, that's insane. You, your conditioning has to be better than anyone else in the world for the most part. But I still, I fucking dare that person to jump on a motorcycle yeah. <laughs> right. and, and do a backflip like like Travis Pastrana. Like his, his job is probably harder than theirs. Like how many skills, and, how many of these skills really translate, right? And, yeah. And the big thing with boxing, everybody says, oh, you can't play boxing. It's like, yeah, you can. That's what we all do. Everybody <laughs> fights each other. That's what boxing is. You play I, boxing I remember being all 14 the time. doing uh, a milk jug boxing. Two oh. fucking milk jugs on your hand. Okay. You just beat the shit out of your friends. We did uh, helmets and gloves. You just yeah, get a yeah, hockey yeah. helmet, hockey gloves, and just go. And, nice, and see, nice. that was another thing that I was thinking about, too, is like, okay, so if we're talking about what makes a sport difficult, my brain thinks, okay, well, it's one thing to just pick it up and play it. Like, if we're in gym class, and it's the first time you ever played a sport, and I was like, hey, we're going to play soccer. All I did was drop a ball in front of you, and we just started you kick it in the net. Try and get in the net. That's your goal. Yeah. Can't can't touch it. Just gotta kick it. Yeah, it's ranked fifty on my list. I can't touch it. That's really hard. How man. is that not fifty? How is soccer not the easiest sport in the fucking world? That's the first sport every kid plays in their life. That's a yeah. sport where you don't need a dime to your name and you can be famous at it because right. it's anybody can play it at exactly. any time. Shout out Brazil. And so now yeah. we can all talk about what it takes to be the best at something, to be really good at it. Yeah, yeah. But if we're talking about what's the most difficult sport, we're not talking about ceilings, we're talking about floors, aren't we? Like, what's the hardest floor to get to? Yeah, yeah that's like, a really you... good way to put it. And so now I'm looking at boxing, I'm like, boxing was like, hey, let's just fucking punch each other. The last Men's year. have been doing this since the caveman yeah. days. This yeah. is literally, that's not hard. Yeah, it might be hard to be really good at it, but like, you know, then you think of there's some other random things like, you know, gymnastics. You can't just do gymnastics. As a grown man, I'm not capable of gymnastics. Like, I'm not flexible. I no. can't even do the splits. What is a front flip? No. I can't jump high enough to get my ass over my head. Why Isn't that shit where you're technically twirling the fucking flag? Isn't that gymnastics? But can, but can you even do it with a... Sh can you even keep your legs straight enough to do it for that long? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's obviously Sometimes easy... if my legs are straight for too long, my calves just, mm -hmm. they, they start cramping. And oh, I'm yeah. just sitting. Just sitting. I'm Same not way. trying to fly through the air. Right? Like, my unathletic ass, like, yeah, I could do a somersault, but it wouldn't be like... I would love to see <laughs> Dustin do a somersault. But it wouldn't be as easy Full as it was... Summer fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. It wouldn't be as easy as it was when I was a kid. So, like, can just anybody just do this? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And same with baseball, too. Like, you know... I got feelings about baseball, but at the end of the day, like if you can't hit the ball or catch the ball, you can't play baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to yeah. learn those skills at the very. I like basic what you level. said. The difference between the the what's the floor versus what's the ceiling kind of thing. Yeah, right? like like what's the minimum requirements versus what does it take to be the absolute best? Right, so. like I so that's why it's like it's hard to compare because like yeah, does hockey deserve to be up there? I I think hockey deserves to be up there because you're doing anything with just a stick on yeah. skates. That's tough. On a really I can't slippery play hockey. surface with knives on your feet. Yeah, I hitting can't, a small black thing. I can't skate. That's I can't hard. play. I can't yeah, skate. I can't skate. I can't play ice hockey. If we're talking about floor hockey, oh yeah, I can play floor hockey. I can't. I play ice hockey. It's yeah. just, I'm not capable. As good of an athlete as I think I might have been in my prime, mm -hmm. I can't play ice hockey even then. So yeah, does it deserve to be up there? Sure. Um, football is pretty technical, so it's not as easy as people think. But should it be the third hardest sport? I mean, there's another thing. What's your role in the sport? Because if we're playing soccer, everyone's basically got the same role except the goalie. <laughs> we're all just trying to get the ball in the net. We just stay a different side of the field. But we do the same thing. Yeah. But we're talking about football. I'm a lineman. I push people. Was that hard? To be, hey, stay here and stand in front of him? Of course not. I'm not going to pretend like that was hard to learn. But if my, am I a quarterback? Oh, reading a defense is, the I think, the hardest thing you can do in sports. So now I'm like, there's a big threshold of, what's hard to do is your role on the team versus 
you know what other people are doing not everyone's doing the same thing Mm -hmm. yeah it was just a dumbass list created (laughs) for us to do this where we just we we make it make sense we try and make him thank you like (laughs) this guy did nothing creative he just threw a bunch of random names he probably put in a random generator yeah the top level sports of all time let me just turn this into an ordered list yeah (laughs) well i just think it's funny too because they got things on here that are just wild like don't they have badminton on there badminton is on here okay is dirt biking or snowboarding on there at all or is this like team sports because that's like i'm i'm all like Yo, fucking put any one of those person people on a dirt bike and send them off a jump. <laughs> um, I don't think riding anything like a dirt okay, bike yeah, so is like there. Extreme sports isn't but really a thing. They do have things like I can see uh, freestyle skiing came in at twenty five. Um, I don't think I see snowboarding. See on this here. that that's full of shit. The man. fact that snowboarding is not on here is a little silly, especially since lifting weights is. Wow. Yeah, eh? when they said lifting yeah, weights was fuck like, this list. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and somehow, long distance cycling, riding a bike, that's h- is significantly harder than what is this? Um, water skiing. Dude, yeah. fuck this guy. I well, can't water ski for a point five second. I've tried I could ride it's a, really hard. I could ride a bike until my ass is bleeding so and yeah. still ride. To, <laughs> like, to be, like for the floor thing, a hundred percent biking should not be in it. But like. <laughs> It's like, come on. That's the only thing we learned before we played soccer was like, how to ride a bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was just teaching my daughter how to ride a bike yesterday. Yeah. She's two. Yeah. Like, that's not a difficult sport to learn. And for that fact, we should also put things that are basic human mechanics like sprinting. That should be at the bottom. Um, long distance running should also be at the bottom. Yeah, I can lose any race. You want to be a I'll long finish. distance runner? Yeah, yeah. Just keep running. <laughs> Like, where am I going? Doesn't matter. Two Octobers, two Octobers ago, Don't I just you started running for there. a month and I was able to do a half marathon. Like, that's not a hard thing to learn how to do. <laughs> Sprinting, cycling. Just ride as hard as you can for like 10 seconds. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is weird. I, so, yeah, weird. to me, it's, just, it's, a, it's bizarre. I think surfing was hard as fuck and easily the hardest sport that I've ever tried to do. And I honestly lasted a day and I couldn't do it anymore. You have a chance of getting eaten by a shark. I also like. could hardly swim. And I, got, <laughs> I got in this thing because the way they did it, the place that we went in Mexico that I tried to learn surfing, you imagine like this patch of water and it's like, okay, so the waves are coming in this direction. So everyone's up here and they're trying to like catch the wave and everyone's kind of like at a line, right? So mm-hmm. you have a line and whoever's next, they jump, they take that wave. Then the next person takes the next wave. Now, once you ride the wave down to the shore, it's kind of on you to kind of swim yourself all the way back around and keep this so- cycle going. And the problem was, is that wave comes and I, I maybe I should have surfed down like this, but I kind of went further out this way. So now I'm trying to like swim back over here, but I'm not a strong swimmer. So every time I get over here, the next wave comes, and knocks me back. And then the next wave comes and I've gotten to here yet and it knocks me back and I'm stuck just getting knocked back and I'm just here. I'm going nowhere and I'm fucking exhausted <laughs> and I can't go. And the guys that are like teaching people how to surf, like the people that are like work in this beach, they're like, fucking move, bro. Get out of the way. And I'm like, ah, I'm fat. I can't. It was terrible. The water is too hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. And I'm like, how is that so far below football? I was fine mm-hmm. football immediately. <laughs> Soccer yeah, what? Uh... is wild to me, the things that they put on this list. And even talking floor, like basketball, like. If you don't, if you're just playing for fun, you can just walk up to the hoop. Like you yeah. can just walk up and think, throw uh, it a bunch. I think we've been on this for too long. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this list is stupid. It was dumb. Stuff. I'm glad we got to tear it apart. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Speaking of it's stupid, uh, um, <laughs> you guys been on? Uh, you guys seen the videos about uh, the new Twitch meta ASMR? Hopefully, you guys watching have seen it. If you don't watch Twitch. Yo, go look it up. <laughs> Just go take a look, as I think it's wild. Kyle. <laughs> is this what you're looking for? Oh, no. <laughs> this is now an Cringe. ASMR. Um, so, basically, to quickly summarize, um, you know, a month ago, everyone was talking shit about um, hot tub streamers and all these girls, you know, selling their bodies to get the tips. Now... They're deep throating microphones and sucking things off and pretending to lick your ear in the ASMR format to once again get your tips and your money because their customers are horny beings and they're taking advantage of the market. Now, the reason why I believe this story is more than just, oh, did you hear what happened? Is because I think it has a bigger question here being 
is this, you know, it was one, it, it was, it was a question posed by some people in the community that I had heard about. And basically what they said was, it's almost more damaging to the Twitch community to constantly be harassing people for what they're doing and what you approve or disapprove of than to just let these people do what they want to do and do their own thing, like without being bothered. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? So it comes down to like, so the platform that they're using, is it a free market or is it a curated market? That's how I see that. So it's, it, it basically, if there is a demand for something, it's going to get filled eventually. So is Twitch making the right move by saying, hey, we don't want these people here because we have a curated market. This is what we do and this is only what we do versus expanding their horizons to have a larger audience and a larger market share so that they can then dominate the, the streaming community, right? So it kind of sounds like they're shooting themselves in the foot in the sense because at the end of the day, that content is out there and now it's going to stay there and it's going to expand <laughs> because it's a market. It, it, there's a demand for it. it it's, people may not agree with it, but it's there. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's only going to get bigger now because people want to see that stuff, right? And, and now, now there's a spotlight on it. So more people are going to be looking into it. And now more people are going to find out that Twitch is against that and they're going to move on to the next thing, right? So I mean, that's, I, I, that's, that's my view on it because I'm, I'm not... Uh, ASMR really makes me uncomfortable like listening to it it like my sh my spine shivers it's uh it's a very uncomfortable moment for me listening to that stuff but matthew i'm here <laughs> it's like seriously it's, it's weird um but with that being said there's a demand for it and uh people want to see that so i it's it's a weird thing because i understand twitch's stance of like hey this is what we do this is how we this is our image and we want to uphold our image but it's uh they're they're losing a market share. That's, See, that's I guess the thing you got to consider too is, is is it Twitch that's the one saying they shouldn't do it, or is it the other Twitch streamers? The community. That's a, yeah, they're trying to make the uproar, and, this, and Twitch has to kind of do something about it, right? This is where I was kind of thinking about it. Is that uh, the idea of Twitch? Like from me as an outsider, haven't really done much of it. Is that it's supposed to be basically broadcasting live? You kind of doing something. Mm -hmm. like whether or not it's gaming which i think was where it started to uh our friend uh shout out pika music sarah pika she she djs live live on twitch for different oh, see, charities cool. and stuff yeah. so it's it seems like it's supposed to be meant for somebody like making content doing something but then when you get to like the the hot the hot tub streaming which is basically just somebody sitting in a hot tub having a podcast on this streaming pa platform that seems like it's supposed to be about something. That's the dream, man. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Is <laughs> is this the platform for that? Or is that supposed to be a YouTube? Like, is Twitch, is there a plan to make it a live YouTube? Mm -hmm. Because if, if that's what they're looking for, then you open your doors to anything and everything. Mm -hmm. But if the idea is uh, a content creator is supposed to come here and show off what they're doing, like actively like making, is ASMR... If they're just sitting there talking and doing whatever they're doing, is that the same thing as actually making music, playing games, doing whatever? Is that are they the same thing or different? So if I was a like a gamer or creator on there, I'd be kind of like, okay, so this this person comes on here, takes millions of views, not doing anything. Those views, maybe maybe there's enough to come around to me too, but maybe I lose start losing viewership because all of like all of these people start doing this That's... and now they're the subscriptions go in there algorithms are going to start put, pointing you towards there instead of me. Yeah, see, I think that's a, a huge issue comes from it because all of the, like the, the gamer people and the people who were there before at the end of the day, is it just them getting jealous because they're seeing everyone else kind of blow up and get all these views? So then it's like, oh, I'm losing out on my views because they're getting more. And it's like, those are that's a very different audience. Like you're not going to all of a sudden, there's not someone who's really into gaming that's going to be Oh, I'm not watching this game anymore because I can now watch a chicken and bikini. It's, those people are still gonna be watching games. Like it's ne never heard of a Pornhub break. I feel like this, there might be a couple of those people that. Have, but have you ever heard of split screening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. No. I do both. Um, oh, no. Yeah. So I I find it I find it weird because it, like the way I see it is if they want a curated audience of very specific people, I relate that to like how Facebook is. Like it's very curated where it started mm -hmm. off as like free and open speech and you can kind of say however, you, whatever you wanted. And now it's very much not that you, yeah. if you say the wrong word in the wrong context, 
you'll get in trouble for it. Mm. And I find that ridiculous. And I find more hate speech on Facebook than I do almost anywhere else. Yeah. And it's the curated place. That's where like the, that's supposed to be the safe space where you go to Reddit and it's just a wide open field of whatever the fuck you want. You can watch kitten pictures of kittens and then you can look at porn with it like within the same <laughs> search yeah. history kind of thing, right? Like it's Yeah, you write kitten, you're getting everything. Exactly. Oh, no. Yeah, so it's and it's very open, but at the same time I have like there has been more in depth and open conversation within those communities than you anywhere else on the internet, and it's it's because everyone has the understanding that everything is much more open there. Like if you don't like something, don't subscribe to that. Keep stay yeah. subscribed to the thing that you want to be subscribed on because those people are always going to be there. You just stay over here. You don't have to get mad that they're there. Yeah, they're fucking there. Like yeah, I feel so, like that might be that might be what the issue is. Is that like Facebook, you said went open to close, but mm-hmm. it seems like Twitch is going from close to open. So these people are like, "This is my platform. This is what. This is the entire reason this platform has any name mm-hmm. is because of what we did. We were all gamers. We all started doing this, and now they're opening the door to take money, like in their in their senses, money out of my pocket to go to all these different avenues. Maybe I wouldn't have taken this career if I didn't know that I the place that I thought was mine is now everybody's." Maybe maybe my community now is shortened because of the fact that there isn't a bigger opening. So there are different streaming platforms that I'm sure it'd be better if they're shut down. I think that's where the conversation yeah, is. Is that there's just fucking people jealous, man? Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent. The world is always changing. To get philosophical, shout out to your your, <laughs> yeah. your old class. But you can never step into the same river twice. Yeah, and it's like people people get set in their ways with one thing, and they want it to stay like that for fucking ever. And then as soon as it changes, they get super pissed. Because now it's it's just not what they have anymore, right? And and that's it's, the thing things too. Things are always changing. It's innovation. You're exactly. Changing, yeah. You're pushing so, the envelope of what you've been given. They yeah they started off with just gaming channels, and in Twitch they didn't. You know I don't think they opened the door to this stuff. I think no one's tried to do it before. Exactly. Until now, and yeah. now they're trying to do it. And I guess my feelings on it coming from like as I've mentioned several times now, I have gay parents. So when I think of things like you know gay rights, I think of do whatever the fuck you want to do. If it's not hurting people or kids, what do I care? Mm -hmm. And I think in the same vein, you know, people have been selling sex forever. You know, I I mentioned this uh, kind of like analogy earlier uh, off camera, but I was like, if you've got a restaurant that's like high class dining and then you've got Hooters next door, it's Friday night. One's got a nice happy hour. One doesn't. One's got all the ladies. One doesn't. Where do you think's popping on Friday Mm -hmm. night? Obviously the Hooters, even if they have shit food, Mm. Everyone's still going there. Yeah. Sex sells. It has since the dawn of time and it's not going to stop anytime soon. Like we're humans. So when I think of this, maybe they're boring. Maybe they're doing nothing. Maybe, you know, they're taking views and that you perceive to be your market. That's tough. That's the way the world works. That's every yeah, business. They're, 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 understa- they're exploiting the algorithm in a sense of they're doing the exact same thing that needs to be done and it's working better for them. Every single yeah, business in the world is subject to having your brand and having a version of you where they sell sex as well. Yeah. That's always a thing. So you can't really I, like avoid how that. I see this is if, if Twitch is strong with their stance and like doesn't allow this, eventually there's going to be a platform that comes in. It's going to allow this and it's going to create a viewer ability. Like there's more people going to be on that platform. Eventually there's going to be some gamer people that go on that platform. And then all of a sudden, a couple years down the road, if I have the opportunity to either go to Twitch where I can only watch one thing or I have the opportunity to go to this other site where I can fucking split screen mm. a fucking <laughs> chicken, a hot tub and a, an actual game being streamed at the same time on the same platform, I'm going to go to that one because it's yeah. easier to deal with. Yeah. It's, but, you know, and, and I'm not even again saying maybe sexual theme things should be put behind uh, some kind of age barrier or something. I know that's not like a hard thing to break, but like. You know, we're talking about like, oh, the algorithm might push those people instead of like the regular streamers. Mm-hmm. If they're behind some kind of age gap, maybe or like age barrier, maybe they don't get pushed as well. Like there's ways that they can work around it and still let them be those people. Let them be whatever they want to be. Because mm. like, like you said, they're not hurting anybody. They're just doing their own thing. And by people going out there and just criticizing them for what? Doing something different than you? If they're not physically hurting you, you thinking you're entitled to those views that you're not getting because they exist is just silly. Mm -hmm. And to people that think that what they're doing is damaging to the youth because it's like accessible sexual content like porn. I mean, if you think porn actually hurts people, 
I mean, it's not my burden to educate you. You're just silly. You need to look things if, up. If you think dumb. porn is inaccessible, <laughs> honestly, you're, you're yeah, kids silly. are more fucked honestly, up than we realize. You know, when I was a kid, I just typed in a game website wrong, and I immediately found myself at a porn site, and I was one letter off of a game website for kids. So yeah. like, it's literally everywhere. Yeah, They're yeah, accidentally one to get letter me. away. <laughs> They're trying to get me there. They yeah. already know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I, I I completely agree with you guys. I think all the the way to shut it up is if Twitch does come out and just say, hey, we're open to everything. We're not just a gaming platform. We're not just a content creator. We're, we're a live streaming platform for whatever creative decisions you want. Once they say that, now gamers, you have to adjust. You either adjust, uh, adapt or die. Mm-hmm. So if, you, if your game was just built on you sitting in front of the screen playing the games, you're going to lose your views because there's somebody yeah. that can also ASMR. At, at the, the end time. of the day, like let's say they do allow all of this and these gamer bros and everything, they get all pissed. Where the fuck are you going to go? Yeah. You're going to keep streaming and you're going to deal with it because that's just how, like, that's that's yeah. the new thing. You have to deal with it. You can go and try and make your own platform and get even more subscribers and yeah. it's just not going to work. You just yeah. have to deal with, there's, the, the market has just been saturated. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, bro. <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting because I, you see certain people starting to get, like, canceled for it and stuff and, like, they're, like, banning some of these people because of their sexual streams and I'm just like... Just make a different, like, I know some people say, because I guess they made, like, a hot tub stream is a new category in its own or something like that. And it's like, oh, Band-Aid fix. But I'm like, make sexual content, sexually themed content where people are showing off their body, making gross sounds. Just throw that in its own category and people don't have to get canceled anymore. Because, like, seeing these people, you know, there's one girl, I what's her name, Amaranth or something like that. Mm -hmm. She's out here getting banned. And... It's like, that's, does she deserve to be banned? I don't think so. That's the girl that had the horse head, right? Yeah, yeah. She's the okay. one with the horse face that was going, yeah, that was <laughs> wild video. Uh, wild. Clip. We were doing some research. I yeah. Swear. <laughs> Just, it was research based. It was research based. We were watching a girl yeah, with a horse head on. Horse head whispering. is a little bit of a weird Google search. <laughs> <laughs> come up with but a things, we were like deep into said. it. But you put one space in there and it's an issue. <laughs> the, the side effect, though, that actually I found was quite funny was how when. You go out here and you try and suppress what she's doing, what mm-hmm. she's doing that's different. You're, you know, indirectly increasing her marketability on her OnlyFans, which is blowing up like crazy. And now all of a sudden we have this kind of concept in cancel culture where if you're what you're doing is unacceptable and you're not allowed to do it anymore. If you do you, the same thing somewhere else, Just the people do that, your own fucking thing, the yeah, people that want to watch you are still going to go find you yeah. whether the big power is telling you that that's bad and we can't do that. And, you know, it happens in everything, not even just OnlyFans and Twitch. It's happening to Kyle's favorite people, Gilly and Keeves. They had the same thing. Yeah. They were told comics. that they're, they're yeah. too too serious for TV. And now look at them. Yeah. It was, just, uh, it was Shane. The, the idea behind it was Shane Gillis was uh, he was on SNL. They resurfaced. Uh, anti-Asian tweets from like 15 years before the the normal thing he gets fired he's cancelled obviously like anybody anybody that's actually building their own career he didn't just stop he's kind of worked towards let's see let's see if I can do it on my own so him uh, Gillian Keeves comes out they start this sketch show just on YouTube they just drop the first one it instantly goes viral it's and it's hilarious. like Okay, it's, it's good. This is this is real. This is like this is something, and they just keep doing it week by week. Every big name comedian is retweeting this, saying how great it is. All these people are saying how good it is, and it kind of immediately shows off. Like, this is what the culture actually wants. As yeah. much as you, <laughs> as much as those same people that are agreeing with you, were like, yeah, I don't agree with the tweets you made, but your content is funny. Like you, you said that. Yep. Did you mean it? No. You just said you don't mean it? Okay. Let's move on. Clearly, we like what you're doing. Clearly, yeah. SNL liked what you were doing. <laughs> they, they, they obviously looked at your Twitter before they hired you, right. said that was fine, then outrage came, and then they made the decision to fire you. And they're missing out on the, the best sketch show that's basically since Dave Chappelle. Yeah, it worked out really good for them. Yeah. And... and like the OnlyFans dad, they they aren't able to make that kind of content on SNL on live TV. If you want to do anything Holy for yourself, fuck. if you do anything to help better yourself, self improvement, yoga, meditation, do anything to help get your mind right, you're gonna look up Gillian Keeves OnlyFans dad. Do it. It 
it's the died. only thing I want you to do to help make your I, mental I showed, health better. I showed Brit, Brit it yesterday, and she was dying. Because, like, <laughs> oh, right away she thought it was going to be something else. Then uh, they had the, the the even better one. I guess, spoiler alert, but uh, the the last white football team. <laughs> and this, the, did you did either of you watch I, that I one? I didn't get to that one. I didn't see that so, one. Yeah, so, I'm waiting one. for it. So, uh, do you want me to... Let's hear it. I, I, yeah, can, so you can go ahead. It's okay. So basically, the idea is, uh, they it's him, him and the football coach. He's like he runs the football department. He's sitting there. Okay, we're uh, we're told that every all these teams are now they're gonna have to sit, uh, bring in the the black team, the black players. But we're holding fast. We aren't doing it. We're gonna go out there and just crush everybody. And then goes to the newspaper. They lose week one. Okay, we took it too soft. We're going to have to work a little bit better. Lose week two. Okay, so we're going to bring in a couple black guys. Bring in a coach. Slowly just builds up that every week that they bring in more black people, they start winning. And the, the whole thing is him taking credit for it. And like, oh, you guys are so fucking racist. Remember how racist you were? Oh, yeah, I said that stuff. But that was like three weeks ago. <laughs> uh, and then at the end, he's wearing like a full African gown. Oh god! And then uh, That's the tough. the guy comes up and because uh, it's a black coach, him in the whole African gown, saying how diverse he is. And this guy comes and like, thank you, coach, for changing the changing the team, changing the culture around, and gives it to him instead of the black guy. Like, yeah, I'm the most vogue. I changed this whole. Oh no! And <laughs> the whole thing is just a funny, <laughs> funny image of. Him basically just taking credit for everything the black guys did coming in. Wild. And it, it was just, it, you gotta watch. It. You <laughs> yeah, gotta watch this guy in action. I just, it's funny because you can appreciate the context of what they're doing, and then you can also remove yourself and then think about how people perceive that kind of stuff and how they may or may not be reacting to this. You take, they, it, take it a little too serious, where it's supposed to be comical on, on purpose right, right? Yeah. like it's supposed to be offensive on purpose right but people take that very serious <laughs> and and how far are they gonna take that like certain people they'll react to everything but are they reacting to this too why not if you're gonna react to all of these things wouldn't it make sense to react to this too are they reacting i don't know i just think it's interesting that it it opens that door in that conversation and then those people are kind of put on the spot it's like did you laugh though yeah funny is funny it doesn't matter who's who's it, who's getting the joke on them. If it's funny, you're gonna laugh. Like, you might feel bad about it because I think but there's a line laugh. too. Like, if people aren't being hurtful in nature, if the thing that they're doing doesn't, and and I don't just necessarily mean like intentions, because like you could do you know something and not think it's racist. That doesn't mean it wasn't racist. That could still be a thing, but I mean like, is what they're doing even really that harmful? Did they just dress up? It's kind of like almost the same conversation. Is it like bad to dress up as an Indian for Halloween? I mean, I'm not going to answer that question, but like it's just, to me, it just kind of feels like the same conversation. But like they're comedians. They're doing what comedians have been doing. If you like it, you yeah. like it. If you don't, you don't. If you if you don't laugh, that means that it's not a finished product and that's not what they want. Their goal isn't for you to be mad at them. If they make a joke and you're like, hey, that was offensive. They're like, oh, shit. I'll try better next no, time. No, I feel like in this situation, their goal is for people to be. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, that. Well, that's. I guess that's the the beauty behind it is that they're saying all the things you're supposed to get mad at. Everybody's supposed to be mad at. Yeah. But they made it in a way that you you can't help but see the humor. You mm -hmm. you hear the words, but they don't hit the same way. They use the right tone, the right setups. So that's that's where it's a finished product. I feel like yeah. So it's like there's a cliff. And there's like, there's the line in the sand. You can't jump over it. Anyone who jumps over, it's like, oh, they went over the edge. Like they yeah. canceled, right? Like you, you can't, you can't do those kind of things. And then there's these two people who are over the edge swimming around in the water and they're going, Hey, look, we're doing this tastefully in yeah. a sense of like, Hey, we're doing this on purpose. And we're clearly over the edge. We're clearly offensive, but there's clearly an audience for yeah. that. And you can't do anything about it. Like, what are you going to say? I, you're not allowed to be in Washington anymore. Like, okay. Canceled off the, the internet. Anyway. I'm still yeah. going to make my video. I think uh, it almost speaks to their um, their skill as comedians, mm. their delivery, and like the subtle nuances of being a comedian and saying those pushy. Yeah, you know, being things. able to touch on those touchy subjects, but still also being able to yeah. Ke yeah. keep it moving forward. There's definitely a, sense, a right? nuance Where... to it than just saying like ignorant shit for the sake of saying ignorant shit. Like yeah. obviously guys like Ari Shafir that just say <laughs> the most ignorant shit. <laughs> yeah. Does he have many jobs these days? I haven't heard much. <laughs> That's the thing, though, is that he still has tons because his his stuff, 
is supposed to be not funny. That's the weirdest part about it. It's absolutely insane, but his fans, like when he made the Kobe Bryant joke, everybody hated him for it, but all his fans, that's what they want him to do is take the worst take and not even be funny. They want him to make himself the biggest asshole and that that gave him <laughs> shitloads of followers. Hmm. He had to yeah. he had to get the fuck out of LA and he yeah. like he doesn't he doesn't make prop like regular real real normal fans, but his weird <laughs> fans that he likes and his type of comedy, it just for some reason that works. Yeah. He niched down, I guess. Yeah, um, he, yeah he definitely niche. He's not really broadcasting. So no, I uh I just realized we've talked about this whole this whole podcast. We haven't even mentioned merch. Yo. Oh Pete yeah, the shirt. Like, hold on a sec. Hold <laughs> on a sec. We have to start this whole thing over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Write down what we just talked about. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Um, guys, we have some prototypes in today. And yeah, we're working see, on some stuff. You get to see just some some casual stuff that you get to take a look at. Yeah. We're uh, we're gonna play with it. Kyle, you know, he's got the clean embroider there. Yo, you like Nike? You like the swish? Guess what? You got the you got the talker way out tee. Hey. The talker way out yeah. tee. I had a I have a nice collared shirt. I'm really liking it. Uh, not wearing it today because I had a photo shoot yesterday and I was trying to rep it. So yeah, was, sweats was, like was, a bitch. So it's all gross. It, yeah, <laughs> it was like nasty, <laughs> crusty. Um, but uh, you know, these uh, these shirts are looking pretty clean. We'll probably throw yeah, up a few more is, designs uh, and. This is uh, exciting. So very soon we'll be having a, a a little bit of a drop, and you'll have a link that we can uh, we can push around and show everybody. And uh, if you feel like supporting the boys, if you like supporting what we're doing, you like the improvements you're seeing, then uh, you'll have a way to do that and uh, support us directly. So we appreciate all the support we get. Um, we've been here for a hot minute though, boys. Yeah, I think uh, it's time to wrap it up. up. Yeah, thank you again for uh, watching. Anybody else got something they want to say? No. Uh, yeah. Just thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, again, if anyone has any comments or anything like that, just feel free to reach out so that we know how to what what direction that we should take things in and how to improve because uh, we're we're always looking to move forward and get a little better on each show. Yeah, the goal is for you to like it. <laughs> That's it. That's all. <laughs> or we hate want. it. <laughs> you yeah. talk about it. That's it. Let's talk about that. All right. With that being said, thanks again, guys. Peace. Yeah, take care.